Hi, welcome back to another video. I don't know whether you can hear me, it's a bit windy. But we have these wheel centres to alter. So the offset is wrong. They need the wheels, the centres shifting four and a half inches that way. But I'll get this one lifted off, tip upside down, get the water out of it, and then we'll take it into the workshop. So they've bought these wheels to go on the front of the tractor to obviously give it less ground pressure, but because the offset is wrong, when they turn the wheels in lock, the wheel or the tyre catches the side of the tractor and it sounds like they've already damaged the bonnet of the tractor. So that's why I'm having to alter them. The way I'm going to take them out is just arc air gouge, then welds away around there. Um, I've, done, I've done them before like this, it does take a bit of doing, but yeah, it's doable. Should have given it a wash off really first, but. So initially I was thinking I'd alter it with the tire on, but I've since decided that's probably a bit dangerous because when you're gouging around there or welding around there, it's the paint on the inside is burning off and filling the tire up with smoke or, you know, it's possibly flammable smoke, flammable vapors, what have you. So for safety's sake and to make it easier to handle, I'm going to take the tire off. A bit of a chew on taking it off, but yeah. Safe. Right, so I got both of them tyres off. Pretty tricky job. Um, my dad gave me a hand, but we're not tyre fitters, so it was a bit of a struggle, but they're off now. So that should make the job safer and easier to do. So I'll I'll just measure from across the top down to the centre of the rim, measure what the offset is now before I start chopping them out. Right, so I've got the tyre off. I know what my measurement is now from across there down to the centre. So I've got that written down. So I can start gouging the welds out now. So I'm going to use um, arc air gouger, gouge around them. And I'm going to use 6.5 mil rods. So I don't consider myself that skilled at carbon arc gouging yet because I've, I've only had it for about a year and I've never done any before then. So yeah, it's definitely trickier than it looks to be good at it anyway to to melt away what you want to melt away without digging too much into either surface okay, we'll, we'll have a go and see how we get on
Right, so I've been all the way around. Um, I'm just, some places I'm down to the separation mark, so separation line, some places I'm not. I am in places like that, but I've just dug too deep there. So I think I'll, I'll go around again, maybe with a smaller rod, just to get in and then just to burn through to the separation line without digging too much into this rim or that rim. Right, so that's that one out. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Some places I haven't taken enough off. Some other places I've dug in a little bit. So grind all that flat and then I have to fill in, fill in the low spots. But yeah, overall that was all right. So lift that out, clean that up as well. And then do that one. So I've got that ground down. You can see I have just dug into it a bit too much really, but I'll have to fill it in again. It shouldn't be a problem, the good thick rims just doesn't look very good. So I'll fill it in well to ground it flat again. Um, and then I'll have to grind some paint out where the, where the center needs to go. And then I'll have the center to clean up as well.
So I'm just on cleaning the center up now. And it wants a bit more cleaning up yet. You can see where I've just gouged a bit into it. So what I might do is grind that level, or grind that so there's an equal amount of bevel all the way around. And when I weld it back in, um, I'll put a bit of a root pass first in the bevel to bring it up level and then put a big weld all the way around the top of it. If I don't sort of level it out, when I come to weld it back in, the weld won't be consistent because there'll be a few dips and a few highs. So I think that'll be my best option. So I've finished cleaning this one up now. I've ground it round so it's equal all the way around. So I think I'm gonna sit this one back in there, tack it in first before I stop before I start chopping that one out and then I've got that one to go off as reference um, in case I forget. Good thing about video and stuff is you can just look up, look back at the video to see how everything was. But yeah, I'm going to tack that one in, get it where I need it, and then we'll gouge that one out. Right, so I've just got this centre sat back in here now. I thought there'd been a reasonably tight fit, but when you look, there's a big gap around there, around the top. So I'm going to have to, well, I was going to do it anyway, but I'll have to make something to clamp it in, and then I'll have to centralise it best I can. It doesn't matter within a millimetre or so, but get it somewhere central and then tack it in. I think what I'm going to do is weld the centre in the other way around to what it was. So it doesn't matter which side of the centre you use. Um, it's just, if I welded it in the same way it was, then it would be right up to the edge of this lip, nearly over the edge of the lip. So if I weld it in this way around, that depressed bit is back into the rim. So as long as the offset is right from this surface to the edge of the rim, or right, it doesn't matter which way around this goes in. Right, so the old offset was 314 millimetres and we want to move it four and a half inches which works out at 114 millimetres so the offset needs to be now 200 mil. So what I've done is, I've, it looks a bit funny looking but I've clamped two bits of box section, 100 mil box section together so that gives me my 200 mil and I've just tacked that bit across the top, same on both sides. So now I can lay the rim over, sit this in, and that should give me my 200 mil offset. The only thing is, it's on the wrong side to tack it. These centers are only welded in on one side, and when I get it all laid in there, the side that I need to tack is the bottom side, which, whether I can reach through and tack it. Um, but it's just easier. With it being 200 mil, it's just a nice round number. I don't know what the measurement would be on the other side, but it'd be more than that, so that's why I'm doing it on this side. Right, so that fits in there nice. There's just a bit of wiggle movement. So I'll have to take a few measurements, make sure it's in the centre. What I'll do first is I'll reach in and I'll draw around the inside with a bit of chalk where the weld's going to be. And I'll lift it back out again, clean up where I'm going to weld it. And then lay it back in and tack it in.
So with the centre turn the other way up, they are nearly welded back in the same place as they were before. Just a little bit, well, a couple of mil, 10 mil difference maybe. So I'll have to grind around that because it's a bit rusty on that bit. Um, and then we'll sit it back in and weld it in. Right, so I've got that set in there, and I think I've got it centralised somewhere near. So it's only a tractor rim, it's not going on a Ferrari, it's, it'll only ever do 35 mile an hour at the most. So I've just got this bit of strapping steel, I've just folded it in half. Well, not in half, but I've doubled it up. And then it just gone round there, and it, it seems equally tight all the way around. So I think that'll be near enough, you know, we're not fussy to a mill or two. So I'll have to try and tack it in now. But I can't tack it on this side, like I said before, because this side doesn't get welded in, only the other side gets welded in. So whether I can clamp these bits of box tight enough to it and turn it on its side and then tack it, or whether I lift it up and reach in from underneath. So that's that, this one tacked in. So I'll just check my offset. Offset that is 200 mil. And the one that I haven't altered is 315 mil, near enough. So yeah, that's 115 mil difference, which is what we wanted. So that one's good to go. So I'll just check the measurements from the outside of there to the centre. We're about. 190 there. 190. 191. So yeah, we're, we're near enough within a mil or two, which is perfectly fine for a tractor wheel rim. So yeah, that's, that's all right. We'll chop this center out now. Right, it's the same again to do with this one now. I might have a go with a bigger rod, an 8mm rod, and see if that's any quicker or not, or any more neater. So that's the second one out, pretty much same thing. I think I may be dug into this one a little bit less than the other one, so that's all right. So same again, I'll grind that out, clean that up, and then I'll lay it in and tack it in. So that's that ground down, cleaned up, so it's evenish, 
all the way around. Got my pizza box clamped onto it, so now I'll sit it into the rim and then center it up and then tack it in. So I've just realised I've got this clamped on the wrong side. This needs to be the other way up. Obviously I'm not paying attention. Right, so I've got the rim sat on a wheel hub now. I haven't centered it up that way. I'm not too worried about that. But I've got it sat on there so it's spin round and I put a block underneath it so I can see. It's just a little bit too far out for my liking. It's about 10 mil out. There's only plus and, plus and minus five mil, but still, I'd like it a bit nearer than that. It'll wobble about that way because, like I say, it's not central. It's not, not that I'm concerned about. It's this up and down movement. So I'm just going to knock a few of the tacks out. Try and get that a bit more truer. A bit truer and then uh, tack it back in again. Right, so I think that's about as near as I'm going to get it. I'm near enough. It's about two mil up to five mil, so it's like plus and minus three mil, well, plus and minus one and a half mil. So I think that'll be all right for a tractor wheel. So while this is on the bench and on the uh, hub, I'm going to weld it up now so I can turn it round and weld it at the same time. So I was thinking about putting a root weld in, but it's, it's small enough for me to be able the prep on there is small enough for me just to put one big weld all the way around like what it would have been originally.
Right, so that's that one welded all the way around. So I'll lift it off now and uh, swap it over, do the same as the other one. Right, so this one's the same. Obviously, my way of sitting the centres in wasn't very accurate. Oh, the rim of the wheel is not very accurate, but you can see when you spin it. Quite a bit of wobble to it. It's a good job I checked. So I'll do the same again. I'll take the tacks off the inside and then get it something like so it's running a bit truer. And then uh, re-tack it and weld it up. Right, so I've been fiddling about with it. I think that'll be near enough. A little bit of wobble in it, but the tyre will take that out. The tyres are not precision made, so... It seems to be... The rim seems to be inconsistent, which makes it difficult. Little bit of run out, I think that'll be all right now. Right, so that's the second one all welded up now. So I'll just spray a bit of red oxide, red oxide over my weld, and then on the outside where the burn mark is, um, and then that's them done. Right, so I've got these flipped up the other way around, <clears throat> and I've just been round that gap with silicon and just sealed that up like it was originally so they only have weld at one side this side is not welded up same with this one so that is them done now so I'll send them back like that the customer can put the tires back on because I'm not cheering about putting them back on um, it'd be easier if the rims are on the tractor it'd be a lot easier putting the tires back on so they can either get the tire services out to do that or do it themselves so yeah that's that job done so uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time